Um, today, we are going to be looking at extraction of eugenol from clothes using steam distillation. All right, so here I have my mortar and pestle, and I'm adding the cloves. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just crush. I'm going to crush. Crushing the cloves allows for more contact with the steam and hence better extraction. Alright, I smell that. Mmm, spicy. Right, so here we have the distillation apparatus. We have our thermometer here in our distillation flask. We're going to put our clothes and water in the distillation flask here and heat from this end. And the, the, the water will turn into steam and we'll extract the eugenol and the eugenol and water will come over and go into the condenser and go into the inner tube of the condenser. Remember the condenser has two tubes. You can see the outer tube here and within that you can see the small inner tube going down. Right? Now, in the condenser, you're going to have water coming in at the bottom and comes up in the outer tube and comes out. So cool water comes in at the bottom, hot water comes out at the top. As you can see, yeah. cool water is coming from the pipe there and coming from the tap there. And then the water, hot water, as it cools down the, the vapors of water and eugenol, and the inner tube, which will come through the inner tube and deposit into this beaker, which is acting as my receiving flask. Okay? And so the beaker will have your water and your usual distillate. Alright, so now I'm going to try and I'm going to put in um, crushed cloves into my distillation flask. Touching there. Detaching. And I'm going to use funnel. Try to make sure that it doesn't go down into my distillation flask. few pieces of pot ceramic material and that ceramic material will, will stop will prevent the water and root and the clove mixture from boiling up and over into into the the tube to the condenser you don't want that because then it would be contaminated by all the other things in the clove so the pieces of pot help to break up the bubbles produced by the turbulence as you boil it. And that's an important thing to do. So I'm going to put this back here. Reattach, make sure the fittings are tightly held in place. We don't have any loss of material. The boiling takes place. I'm going to tighten that bit. We can always readjust these. Okay. Right. And then, alright, so I'm going to add some water. No. Don't want to put too much. I want to put enough. Alright, so I'm waiting in that there with some water. And I'm gonna allow that to sit for about 15 minutes so it can be properly wetted by the water. Alright, so I'm gonna close that, put it back in my thermometer. Over there. And then 
just to check, make sure that all the fittings are in place. And now we're going to get our Bunsen burner and we're going to start our heating. Okay. All right, so we're going to test our flame here. Oh, wow. There you go. I'm going to turn it down some. Okay. Now before we before we start the heating process, we've got to test our water system. See that it's working. So we're going to turn on our water. Fill our condenser. We have to do that before we start. The condenser filling up, out the tube filling up with water. And it starts to come down and out and into. And what we want to do is just regulate the temperature a bit. We don't want too much, too little. We're going to slow it down a little bit. Okay. So, our condenser is working, everything is going. So, let's get the heating process started. I'm going to just move this. Try to take this down a little bit more. That's better. Move that underneath. To get the heating process. So we allow that to come up to temperature. Alright, so you're seeing it's starting to bubble up now. Alright, and we have to be careful, watch it carefully so it doesn't go over into the condenser, boil over. And so we have to regulate the temperature gets too, too turbulent and we have to remove the flame a little bit and so on. Alright, so notice that the liquid is accumulated and it's now starting to run down. You should see your first drop shortly. First drop of distillate. There you go. And now we're starting to have regular drops. Alright. Way up here, look, notice that my thermometer bulb is in line with the turn off into the condenser. All right, and we're beginning to see regular drops now of my eugenol water mixture. Check the spicy odor here. Right. So, so in a condenser, what you have is that you have the water which is cooling the vapor on the inner tube, running in the opposite direction. So the water is coming from the lower end, comes out at the top. Right. So it's cooling the inner tube, and you can see if you come in closely here. You can see the inner tube where the condensation is taking place. It's coming down to here. You see the droplets coming down. And the cool water coming from that direction cools it down. In fact, as soon as it hits the cooler surfaces, it starts to condense. All right. So this cool water cools it down on the inside, turns to droplets and run down into the receiver. All right. So that's why you have always in your condenser, the cold water which does the cooling on the outer tube, in the outer tube, is going in the opposite direction of the vapor that's going that's on the inside inner tube which is the, what you want to condense so at the moment we see condensation up to less than a half so I know we know that our water our water rate our flow rate for the water the cooling water is okay if it goes a little bit too far we turn it up so that you have more cold water coming up right now we have boiling we don't have any danger of going over so that's going at a good rate Okay, my thermometer is saying 94, 93, 93 degrees Celsius, so it's boiling below water as you would expect. Um, so there you go, boiling below water temperature. Right, so we have a good amount of our distillate coming up now, and we look at it closely at the end. 
All right, so if we're looking closely at our liquid, we will see that we have a large layer at the bottom and then a very thin layer, um, oily layer at the top. Uh, a water layer at the bottom, which is a thicker one, and a thin layer, an uh, oily layer on top.